So thank you, Tim, and thank you for this great opportunity to uh, um, to present um, at the forum. Um, forums like this are very important um, for all of us to share ideas and experiences. Um, you know, sustainability is an important social issue, and the, there are most likely a perception that um, IT and computer rooms are the main culprits in the consumption of power. But I think we all know that better by a lot of the initiatives that we do in IT. So today, um, what I'd like to go through is, for those that don't know Foxtel, a brief introduction to Foxtel. I'd also like to cover some of the um, Foxtel environment in, in initiatives. Then I will go in um, and cover some of the, the green IT initiatives from the, from the IT perspective and then the case study of cooling the computer room. Now, sorry, that presentation will be um, presented by um, Koskin Dunlop, um, who's um, the planning and technical manager here and he's our champion for, for green IT. So Foxtel the company. Um, so Foxtel is one of Australia's most progressive and dynamic media companies. Um, we employ around 2,500 people and we deliver a a diverse subscription television service, both regional and metropolitan. Um, initially we were just um, uh, regional, but as of May last year, uh, through an acquisition, now we provide a lot of our content um, to regional subscribers. We provide this over cable, satellite and broadband distribution. Um, so I apologise, I think this is going a little bit quicker. Um, I'll just move on. As I was saying, um, um, since creating a new national subscription television service, um, as I mentioned, Foxhall and Ostar merged in May 2012, and now we directly import the employ around 2,500 people and a further 2,000 people. Workers engaged in sales and installation. Um, sorry. Our Foxtel Television Centre is in Northright in Sydney, um, is the headquarters of, um, of Foxtel's national subscription television operation and houses a lot of the te uh, of Foxtel's television studios. Um, uh, Foxtel, for those that don't know, is owned by 50% uh, Telstra and now News Corporation are uh, 50%. So that's just a quick... Um, Fast facts of Foxtel, so our audience is um, over 2.2 million subscribing households. We reach over 7 million views, viewers each week um, and channels, over 2,000 diverse channels, uh, more than 20 owned and operated using Foxtel networks. Sorry, I think the, um, the screens are going quicker than, than I'm talking. As I mentioned, people, um, approximately 25 directly employed. Um, right around Australia, predominantly in Sydney, Melbourne and the Gold Coast. Um, broadcast via digital, satellite, Xbox, Telstra 3G, mobile, um, the Telstra T-Box. 73% um, of our customers, sorry, on, uh, with Foxhole service have an IQ box, so that's our latest um, version of the set-top box and it has 92% 90, satisfaction rate. 48% uh, of our customers with Foxtel services provided by Ostar have a MyStar box and also a third of our customers have HD. Our, our highest rating uh, program of all time was the, the, uh, the World Rugby Cup in 2011 um, uh, between Australia and New Zealand. So just moving on to some of the Foxtel environment issue. Um, so Foxtel participates in News Corporation, who's 50% owned of our company. Um, sorry, it looks like it's screening. Um, so Foxhole participates in the Global Initiative and you can find a lot of information on the website, the URL that I've provided there, by reporting a lot of the energy use and by preparing annual energy listing initiatives to reduce Foxhole's impact on the environment. Um, one of the interesting statistics there uh, is that since in the fiscal year 2012, News Corp carbon footprint uh, included, uh, including Foxtel, was over 480 
6,000 metric tons of metric of carbon dioxide compared to a figure in 2006 of five, around 558,000. So a lot of the initiatives are certainly um, starting to kick in. Um, so some of the other initiatives, so certainly implementing sustainable, sustainable IT practices as showcased and we've gone through weeks, uh, green IT weeks is one initiative that, to reduce energy use. So some of the other initiatives from a Foxhole perspective um, that we've engaged, we're certainly improving our data centre power usage in, Mel in the Melbourne data centre and Costum will talk a little bit more about that. Um, we've also a rec recent replacement of our air-cooled chillers with more efficient uh, water-based chillers to help cool our broadcast centre. Uh, recycling of e-waste, so this certainly includes a, a lot of retire retiring set-top boxes, phones, PCs and etc. Also, Foxtel publicises its energy efficiency features of our set-top box. We work with ST uh, set-top box suppliers to continue the increase of energy efficiency of our new boxes. Um, whenever we do a lot of um, office office refurbishments, they include the addition of motion sensor lighting, so we're reducing our power usage. All our tenders that go out include environmental. Uh, credentials to the vendors applying for the particular type of work. Um, another initiative was a, our shift to electronic file management. Um, within um, Foxtel we certainly um, store a lot of um, videotapes. Uh, the last count uh, we had a, around 165,000 kilometres of tape in storage. Um, um, with that kind of stuff you can go around four times around the work. So we've We've now moved away from having physical tapes um, being transported into Foxtel and we've moved through a big program of work to electronic file management. So all of these initiatives are complemented um, by action that Foxtel takes to reduce consumption in set up boxes. And we have a subject to a voluntary code of practice agreed by the um, subscription TV industry and endorsed by the government. Um, another thing that we do do is donate airtime to environmental community and service announcements. So there's some of the um, Foxhole initiatives. More specific around green IT initiatives, um, we just as of yesterday we um, through our printing uh, a switched on a service that is provided by the printers around follow me service. So what the service allows a user um, to print, it allows a user to print a document and collect the, collect the print from a printer and use a swipe card. Um, the beauty of this, you can print in one location and, and collect in another. Um, any print that is left in queues are deleted after 24 hours. The other thing we do is certainly produce uh, uh, monthly print usage reports by department. Um, so in fact, um, at the time that I provided this, these statistics, so the last fiscal year, we had printed over six million odd pages, but with the acquisition of um, Ostar, that number is around eight million pages that we print in Foxtel. Uh, we certainly, um, another initiative is green, green IT training. Um, uh, green IT training is offered to all IT staff, uh, and 18 Foxtel staff participated uh, in Green IT training certification program in the last 12 months, which is a great initiative and certainly supported by the IT management. Um, one one item that I, that I didn't have on there is um, around video conferencing. So certainly our appetite for high quality video conference between all our offices has increased in the last 12 months. The use of this technology um, will we'll see further investment investment in the technology. Just a, a statistic. In July 2012, there have been over 6,000 video connections between our sites, totaling more than three, over 3,800 hours of uh, video conferencing. And of course, another initiative is around um, the Green IT Video Competition. So Foxtel is, is sponsoring video competition and, and is open to not only Foxtel staff, but um, any other user that wants to present a 60-second video on on trying to get a message across about IT and, and um, green initiatives. So if people are interested in having a look, 
um, certainly um, go to go to the site and I will provide the site. It's www um, stay with me, www.brandhon.ee. So just moving on. So certainly um, Foxtel has moved down down the um, down the path of virtualization. The reason why we did so, you know, I would assume that a lot of other organisations would have the same guiding principles. It certainly delivers a low, lower cost of ownership, and with the um, the infrastructure these days, it uh, certainly reduces our power and cooling requirements. Um, we have found that it uh, reduces our server maintenance, server hardware maintenance costs, and our overall administration costs. And some of the platforms um, increase functionality. Um, it certainly decreases time to production so we can stand up environments very quickly. Um, we provide self-service to the infrastructure. Um, we provide server development environments. Our configuration of our servers is at a density of 1 to 10. Um, and, at, and our desktop that we, we're about, we're doing the proof of concept, our density is 1, one to 80. And the infrastructure is full, fully redundant. Um, and we provide 99.8% SLA. So with our server infrastructure and um, the selection, so our server platform, uh, when we back in 2009, we, we looked at different types of um, software technologies and we selected VMware uh, at the time and still believe it's best to breed. Um, we found that very easy to deploy and use. Our blades or our, our server infrastructure is based on um, HP infrastructure. Um, our, our candidates are uh, full corporate side of sentences completed in 29 to determine the baseline. And then we went through a process of um, identifying the types of platforms that can be virtualized. As, as many have found, not, not every application is a candidate for virtualization. Um, the migration, so the our server migration was based on a lease cycle and virtualization suitability. So here in um, Foxtel, we lease all our infrastructure. So at the time when our server infrastructure was uh, at end of lease, um, decisions were made at that point on the suitability for that platform to be either virtualized or we, or we continue down the path of purchasing physical servers. Um, But this just gives an idea since 2009 and 2013 our path down virtualization down. Um, as you can see March 13, we've, we've got a, almost an equal balance of the number of physical servers on virtualized and the number of um, virtualized servers in our production, non-production environment. Um, what we've been able, certainly been able to do, represented what the, the grey graph is, we've been able to retire a lot of servers. Um, through this process. Um, so desktop virtualization, so our three year plan, our goal is to have 40% of our desktops virtualized by 2016. At the moment our main focus is in our contact centers. Um, the, rate, the, the density ratio that we're looking at is 1 to 80. Um, again, provides lower TCO. Um, we will certainly gain a lot of reduction in power. We're expecting around 25 to 35 percent. Initially, we will just deploy the thin client onto a desktop. Our long-term aim is to replace that by with a thin client. Um, some of the projects that uh, that we've targeted to roll out virtualization and um, are being are being a call center. Um, as we go through the integration of that business within Foxtel, uh, we are looking at rolling out a virtualization platforms and the way we'll deliver our Fox applications to those desktops is over, um, over a virtualization platform. Uh, as I mentioned, Moody, we'll do the same here in Moody Ponds, uh, which is a call centre. So that was, a, um, that was just a, a high level overview of what we've done in I, IT from the Green Initiative. I'll now hand over to Costin who will take us through our case study. So this is cool in the computer room. Thank you, Frank. Um, we uh, began our um, 
uh, exercise of trying to reduce our PUE uh, a few years ago. And I just want to go through some of the, uh, the steps that we went through to reduce the, the PUE. And the slide just explains uh, what a PUE is for in case people were wondering how to calculate it. Um, we, what we did was we, we sealed off uh, all, all the openings within the raised floor to minimise the air leakage through the raised floor. Then we replaced all of the grills with new grills that had adjustable baffles in them. Um, where we had no equipment, we installed blanking plates where racks were not fully populated. We converted the data centre air conditioning units that were belt driven fans to EC fans. And uh, we uh, also installed a cold oil containment to minimise the mixing of the supply and the return air. Well, this allowed us to increase our air conditioning set return air set points from 20 degrees centigrade to 25 degrees, uh, which allowed us to reduce our PUE from 1.7 down to 1.5. Um, the graph uh, that, that we have here, it just shows that at the beginning, you'll see in March 11 how close uh, it is, the, how higher it is for the air conditioning kilowatt usage in the computer room where it actually gets lowered and it's main, it remains stable even though the UPS load within the computer room has increased. Um, these slides actually show where we had some existing aisles that we converted into a cold aisle and uh, this this one is actually a new set of racks that we installed with the cold oil containment already planned. So Tim, that um, concludes our presentation. Fantastic. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate your contribution today. Fantastic. Thank you so much, guys. I really uh, that's great. So now at this point, we will move on to the live Q&A portion of today's session. So if you do have any questions uh, for Frank or Costco that you'd like to submit, please do so now in the GoToWebinar control panel, which you'll see on your screen. There's a question or maybe called a chat panel. Please feel free to insert any questions you have there. The first question, we'll kick off uh, Frank straight away, is, uh, oops, so let me just change the screen quickly. Okay, so the first question we have today, Frank, uh, is a uh, user submitted question, which is, um, well, did you find it difficult at Foxtel to get funds uh, for green-related issues? So uh, I wouldn't say difficult. We Over the last 12 um, or even 24 months from an, I, an IT perspective, we, we have certainly submitted business cases that are directly attributable to reducing our green um, our PUA. Um, the, the example that Coskin gave about the cold oil containment, that was part of a business case. Um, and that business case was in excess of $700,000. $700, um, I, I think the trick is that you've got to be able to demonstrate um, um, the value for money. Um, as Costco mentioned, we with a lot of these things with the, the, the computer room and upgrading our um, our condensers and our conditioning units, we always were able to demonstrate in the in the business case what the what the demand and the usage of those particular units were. And then at the end of the um, at the end of the, the project we were able then to do, do a review um, and, and show the impacts of whatever we've done and implemented into the into the data centers. Um, I got a, a I've got a view that that ain't tomorrow, certainly down the track somewhere, all business cases that you know IT departments will put up have got to include an impact on on power and, and usage to be able to justify the initiative that they're trying to get across the line. So I hope that answers the question. Thank you, Frank. The next question we have for you is, are green initiatives and to that environmental initiatives assigned priority or taken seriously at Foxtel? 
Oh, yeah. um, they certainly are. Um, we've got a, a, a committee, as I mentioned, that, we, that reports into, into, news, into News Corp. Uh, a committee meets uh, I think on a quarterly basis and it's got a, a, a wide range of initiatives um, and the initiatives are given priorities. Uh, certainly as we have grown as an organisation um, and a lot of the buildings are starting to age, we've had to step back and have a look at the a lot of the plant and the effectiveness of the plant. So uh, priority has certainly been given to those projects and funds being provided to upgrade a lot of those um, mechanical plants here in Melbourne. Um, we were able to get prioritised the upgrade of all our switchboards to be more, more efficient. And likewise in our North Ride um, premises we've gone through the, the same process of upgrading all our switchboards and, and changing cooling towers. Um, so we, we certainly do take it seriously. Um, we report back, as I as mentioned earlier to news, we've got the targets that we have to meet. Um, so, uh, so those kind of initiatives are, are certainly taken seriously and given priority. Thanks so much, Frank. We have a, an attendee submitted question now as well which is how often do you conduct your energy audit at Foxtel and what green certification have you adopted or you're currently looking at adopting? Good question. We've, um, um, at the moment we, uh, we, we don't have, we, we're not certified so we, we, we certainly uh, um, observe a lot the guidelines issued by the governments and, 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 and similar organisations. Uh, we've just you know, been going through the process of, of trying to, as Goskin mentioned, at least identify where our areas of concern are and address those. Um, and we, we, as I said, we do deliver to, to um, targets for a lot of initiatives. So we, we certainly do measure um, and participate in surveys and green surveys by other organisations, but um, at this point in time, we, we, it's not on our short-term radar to look at it, any certification. But, but in saying that, somewhere I would believe down, further down the track that um, we would we would be looking at um, sort of kind of certification. Thanks, Frank. The next question we have from the attendee is: You mentioned that all IT staff had training in green IT. How was this initiative implemented and accepted by the staff? What a misled. It was offered to all IT staff. Um, um, eight, 18 at the time participated and, and were certified. Uh, staff certainly uh, jumped to the opportunity. It was supported um, by a CIO, Robin Elliott. Uh, um, we had a lot of replies um, and, Pete and a lot of the staff are keen to pursue, even further pursue certification um, as part of the training, um, as part of our IT Green Week here, the people have certainly uh, been very enthusiastic, enthusiastic sorry, um, in participating, um, providing a lot of initiatives um, in, from the not just not just from the IT staff but, but um, outside. Um, so yeah, we. Um, um, we, we take it seriously, we, we provide the opportunity and people have certainly responded quite well to that. It's only early days uh, um, and we, we certainly encourage people and give them time to be able to, to participate in the cert certification and the examinations that they need to do. Thanks very much Frank. What would you say are some of the greatest barriers you face at Foxtel when trying to implement new green initiatives? Unmuted. Good question. First comes to mind would be money. <laughs> um, look, it's like anything, it's priorities. Um, it, it's, the, it's the way um, the initiative uh, is it's submitted. Uh, with a couple of things, uh, yeah, I, I think they're, they're the, 
the main thing is it's just the priority and the impact of that initiative that's going to have on the organisation. That's what I would say. Thanks, Frank. Uh, the next attendee question is, uh, what kind of paper sav savings did you see with implementation of Follow You Printing? Yeah, we've only um, we've only launched that uh, yesterday, the third of June. So it was a it was a an initiative it was part of our IT Green Week initiative. Uh, so we will we certainly certainly do have the capability of measuring all the um, of the print usage. The, the the service or the platform cert also provides the capability to um, display the uh, the cost of print. For, for, <coughs> excuse me, every time somebody prints. Um, so at this point in time, um, you know, we're only two days into the service. And it's only been rolled out in, in two of our centres, so it's a bit early yet. But um, we'll be happy in 12 months' time to, um, to share that information. Thanks, Frank. In regards to a leading on from the barrier question, who are the main stakeholders within Foxtel or within any organisation that you feel you need to include to get their buy-in uh, to ensure a, a smooth implementation of any new green or sustainability related strategy. Unmuted. Yep, so it's got to start from the top. So in in um, our sustainability committee committee, our COO um, certainly um, is participate, our CIO certainly participates. Um, our direct executive of our products, so we, we certainly give buy-in at the highest level, um, and that way there is, you know, can I get the buy-in at, at that high level? You know, it's pretty hard, I, I believe, to to get initiatives through. So, um, yeah, we we've got representation from the executive and the, a lot of the, op, the different operational managers across um, the organisation, not only IT but our product teams. A lot of the set-top box development sits within our product teams, um, so they they certainly participate um, in in our committee, and likewise with our building services for all our premises. So I certainly say it needs buying from the from the highest level. Thanks, Frank. Well, I guess evolving from buying uh, from management and CIS staff. What other recommendations would you give to other organisations who are looking to implement similar green programs? So what are your key learnings? Look, look I, I certainly, base, baseline, so whatever the initiatives that you're looking at, whether it's going to be printing or reducing your PUE, you need to measure, measure, measure. Define what your baseline is, look at the initiative, and then go back to see the impact on that on that baseline, and that's the approach that, that we've certainly taken. Um, and a lot of the savings that you would get that um, you've got to be able to demonstrate that you you know you deliver the savings, whether it be reduction in power or paper usage or whatever it might be. But it's very very important to be able to measure, measure, measure. Thanks, Frank. The next question is, can you tell us what other activities do you do at Foxtel in relation to green IT? Is there a video competition or anything else that you may have implemented recently that might be of interest? Yes, yeah, certainly. So some of the other activities we've got planned, um, we're upgrading our building management system here in um, our call centre in Moon Ponds. We believe that's going to deliver savings of around by memory, $2,200 a, a month. Um, so that's in the progress of being implemented. I mentioned with the video competition that um, that's uh, well on its well it's on on its way. If you go to the website, um, I think we've had uh, 20, 24 entries. Not all not all of Foxtel, so it was open really to the public, to anybody that wanted to get a, a message across about IT initiatives. Um, so we do um, mobile collections. We've also often this week as part of IT Green Week, people can bring in um, their old PCs, and laptops, and we'll dispose of them. 
but uh, some some of the videos are quite interesting and could give them good ideas. So if people have got time, um, certainly go have a look. And um, if you do, vote for the Print Green movie. <laughs> Had to get a plug in. Very good. Thank you, Frank. Uh, this is a notice to all attendees present at today's session. If you do have any final remaining questions for Frank or Costin to submit, please do so now by the GoToWebinar control panel. So another question we have, Frank, for you today is, if, if other organisations are also implementing green strategies, do you uh, to, sorry, do you organise? Uh, sorry, do you enter into conversations with other like-minded organisations around similar green IT initiatives that you may be implementing, and being able to share key learnings, or is this something you may be looking to do in the future? I'm muted. No, I think we'll be look, looking at in the future, Tim. Thanks, Frank. So we'll just wait on any final questions now from the audience. And if there isn't, then we'll certainly wrap this session up. So please, any final questions, please submit them now. I'm muted. Okay, well, if there's no final questions, that will end our webinar session for today. So we'd like to extend a big thank you to our speaker, Frank, for your time and, and certainly for your willingness to share your expertise and experience with us today. I'd like to also make a big thank you to all who participated and attended today's session. We're glad you could join us and hope the session was helpful for you. Just a reminder that a recording of this live session will be made available within 24 hours via the Green IT Week virtual conference webinar registration page. So please, please do check back if you'd like to review the session. Were there any closing remarks or comment, comments you'd like to make, Frank? Comments. I'm muted. Uh, uh, as I said earlier, Tim, that was um, certainly, excuse me, appreciate the opportunity to, um, um, to talk through um, or, and present our, um, our experience thus far. Um, a lot of times people think that um, computer rooms are the big, the big users of power. Um, I think I saw some stats not long ago that, you know, at the end of the day, the, the amount of computer rooms that are, there are in Australia compared to the, the total usage of businesses, a low amount. We've also been able to demonstrate that, that um, you know, the, the, the amount of power that we use in our computer rooms compared to the general running of the building is a very low percentage. Um, so, yeah, once again, I. I Appreciate the opportunity, and, and um, events like this is certainly um, beneficial beneficial to all. Um, it gives people at least an insight to some of the opportunities um, that uh, an organisation can, can take up. We're more than happy to uh, um, offline, you know, <coughs> take any other questions or or walk through any of our other initiatives. So thank you, Tim. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much both Frank and Koskin for your um, wonderful attention in your session today. Uh, just a reminder, if you do have any questions that you'd like to direct towards Frank, you can direct them to his email at frank.palermo at foxtel.com.au. And alternatively, if you wish to speak to a uh, Foundation for IT Sustainability representative, you can direct any emails to info at fits org. That's double F I T S. So with that, that will conclude our session for today. Once again, we'd like to extend a big thank you to Frank and Costin for joining us, and also to our attendees for participating uh, in today's live Q and A session. Thank you again, and please do enjoy the rest of your day.